Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel and in today's video I'll share some of the fascinating gems that I picked up from Greg Dean's book, Step by Step Stand Up Comedy. I'll include the best answer that I've found to the question, what makes a joke funny? So my friends and family think it's strange that I have this obsession with comedy and specifically what makes things funny. After all, I am not a cut up. I don't churn out jokes and puns, and I am almost never the funniest person in the room. But I love to laugh. Comedians are some of my very favorite people. And frankly, wanting to know how comedy works springs directly from my deep interest in how human behavior works. It turns out it's not really that much of a leap. So, I have been reading some books about comedy. Most of these, not shockingly, are not exactly what I'm looking for. They are more for the comic practitioner than someone interested in the nuts and bolts of humor. But I was thrilled to find that Greg Dean had both perspectives in his book. So if I were a working stand-up or I wanted to break into the business, I would definitely read this book or sign up for one of his workshops. He had great advice for everything from building a routine to specifics on how to rehearse to handling hecklers. But in addition to this, he has a universal theory on why jokes are funny and a step-by-step -step guide to writing funny jokes. So that is what I plan to cover here. First, let's start with his universal theory on why things are funny. So he contends that all jokes are made up of two parts. So we know these parts as the setup and the punchline. Now lots of jokes don't have a spoken setup, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Dean's theory is that in order for something to be funny, it has to surprise you. In order for you to be surprised, you have to be expecting something else first. So that is what a joke does. It causes you to expect something first, and then it surprises you with something different. Here's how Dean says it works. Quote, the setup of a joke creates a first story in our minds that leads us to expect something. Then the punch surprises us with a second story that's compatible with, yet somehow different from what we're expecting. So here's an example from the book. It's a great quote from Stephen King, who was asked how he comes up with such imaginative storylines for his horror books. And he responded, I still have the heart of a little boy in a jar on my desk. Okay, let's analyze that with Dean's theory. The setup of that joke is, I still have the heart of a little boy. That creates a story in our minds that is fleshed out by our own experiences, our assumptions, and our expectations. We assume he's describing his ability to pull stories from his active, childlike imagination. And we naturally assume that he will continue with that storyline. So when he says the punchline, in a jar on my desk, we are momentarily disoriented. We're still traveling down the path of the first story where the heart is a metaphor for a playful act of imagination. Then it takes a beat or two before we get the new story where the heart is now a dismembered organ in formaldehyde. That moment of surprise is where the humor lives. What is important to note is how much information for the first story that we automatically supply without being explicitly told. So as humans, we're constantly adding information to stories based on prior experiences, cultural norms, stereotypes, and other implicit understandings that we have about the world. It helps us to better predict outcomes in an uncertain world. Jokes take advantage of all of these assumptions to surprise us and make us laugh. As I mentioned before, most jokes don't even need a setup since the setup is already implied by the knowledge of the world around us. So that, that includes many sight gags, like someone using a banana as a phone, or even physical comedy. So watch this video and think about your expectations. So our expectation was that this dog was going to land safely on the couch, and the intense hero music helps to fuel that expectation. When that doesn't happen, it's funny, even if there's no explicit setup. Now, let's talk about Dean's joke diagram. So Dean dissects this further by breaking down jokes into their most minute components. He does this to show function, but also to give some terminology for his step-by-step -step joke creation system. So the second part of this video covers an overview of this system. Here's his joke diagram. You can see there's a setup and there's a punch and there's a, some assumptions and a connector in between. So let's try to fill out this based on a classic Groucho Marx joke. And the joke is, outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend. Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. So let's go through this. The setup is, outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend. The first story is that people rely on dogs and books in that order for friendship and sustenance. The target assumption is that the word outside means except, so except for a dog, books are best. 
The connector is the word outside. The reinterpretation of that word is that the word outside actually refers to the physical exterior of the dog itself. The second story is that reading is not useful or valuable if you're physically inside a dog since it's too dark in there. And the punch is inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. So I confess to liking to break things down into component parts, but practically this is also really useful in Dean's joke prospector system. So this is a system that he uses to create new jokes. His system seemed foolproof enough that even I, someone who doesn't have a great facility for one-liners, was persuaded that I might be able to write a couple of funny jokes using his system. The Joke Pro Prospector is a two-part system composed of uh, the joke map and the joke mine. So the joke map helps you write a bunch of setups off of a single topic, and then the joke mine drills down to find punchlines for each setup. If you really want to do this, I suggest you read the book because um, he has lots and lots of more detail, but here it is in a nutshell. So to follow his prospecting for gold analogy, the joke map helps to focus in on an area or a topic and identify some promising setups from this one topic. So one of my favorite observations from this book is the idea that our sense of humor evolved as a means of coping with painful things. So what that means is that your jokes will be better if you choose a topic that is uncomfortable for you or for others. He defines the topic as a single subject presenting something wrong. It has to be a large enough topic to get multiple jokes out of, like um, a recent breakup or your relationship with your family or something broad, some broad thing that you are annoyed about. So let's walk this through with an example that he gives in the book. The topic is my family. So first you're gonna make an association list to generate a bunch of ideas about your family. So mother, father, family vacations, family dinners. Um, now from that list, you know, you can make a pretty long list. But from that list, determine a punch premise. So that means a negative feeling that you have about something on the list. So if you have a bunch of negative opinions about things on the list, you can write a bunch of jokes about them. And that's essentially how you build a set. But back to the joke. So let's say our punch premise is, my relationship with my mother was very bad. So remember, this is an example from the book. This is not my example. So now you're going to reverse that punch premise to make the setup premise, which is the opposite. My relationship with my mother was very good, right? Two opposing storylines. Now, because the setup process is exactly the reverse of what we believe, we're gonna have to use a little imagination and creativity to come up with some of the setup options. Um, here are a couple. I call my mom all the time, or thinking of my mom makes me smile. Okay, pick one of those setups and plug that into the diagram. We're gonna choose, I call my mom all the time. So now that we have our setup right now, we can use Dean's joke mine to create some punchlines off of that setup. So this part has a lot of detail, but I'm gonna basically say you are gonna figure out a bunch of assumptions that go into your setup. Choose one of them, and then figure out what the connector is. So the connector is the thing that makes us believe that assumption. So for example, if our assumption is that the word in the situation, I call my mom all the time, the word call, means to telephone, the connector is going to be the word call. So now we think of some alternative interpretations. He calls them reinterpretations of that connector. Some other interpretations might be that instead of meaning to telephone, call means calling someone's name or calling a rude name or making a call as a referee. Dean points out that choosing the most obvious reinterpretation sometimes helps a joke since that is the one that the audience will probably mentally reach for as well. So we're gonna choose calling a rude name, which creates a whole different storyline. Okay, now we have to turn that story into an edited punchline, preferably with the reveal at the very end. So here's the whole joke. I call my mother all the time, but in polite company, I can't tell you what I call her. All right, it's not the world's best joke, but it helps you see how the process works. So my dad and my brother and I spent some time over the holidays using this system to come up with a joke. It was not super easy, but I could see how it would get easier. It helps to be the kind of person who sees a typical interpretation of something and then immediately thinks of different interpretations. Some of that is really just a gift, but some of it is practice and training. Dean has a lot of other fun tips like hard consonants are always funnier than soft ones and quoting in character is almost always preferable, but this video is already way too long. I have to say I'm enjoying this new knowledge for deconstructing jokes and understanding why things are funny. Next, I want some of Dean's views on why some jokes are not funny. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.